Good evening. This is in honor of the uh, feast of the, the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Good evening, and welcome to St. Thomas the Apostle. Today we celebrate the 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our Mass is being offered for the intention of Walt Micah. Our celebrant for this Mass is Father Ed, assisted by Deacon Frank. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each of you. Our readings this weekend are going to invite us to step out of our comfort zones and to trust that God will lead us where we need to go. I need a little bit of that this week. I decided to go back to my regimen of doing exercise, and so I rejoined the plan of fitness and my body is sore in places that I have forgotten still work. But hopefully it will keep me healthier as I continue to move forward. Friends, as we gather this weekend, let us just for a few moments that we may celebrate this liturgy well, ask the Lord for his mercy and for his forgiveness as we need that at this time in our lives. As we prepare for the liturgy, let us, as, let us ask for God's mercy and healing 
For this we pray. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and the Son of David. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. In Christ Jesus, you are merciful and compassionate to all. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And together we pray the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we might experience the promise of eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, for you are one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, observe what is right, do what is just. For my salvation is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord, and becoming his servants, all who keep the Sabbath free from profanation and hold to my covenant, them I will bring to my holy mountain and make joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you Gentiles. Insomuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles, I glory in my ministry in order to make my race jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? For the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. Just as you once disobeyed God, but now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now disobeyed in order that, by virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God delivered all to disobedience, that he might have mercy upon all. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, it is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the tables of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. I'll begin by saying that I think the readings and the message of our scriptures this weekend are very challenging for us to hear. In light of all the political polarization around immigration concerns in our country and our world, the challenges of racism that has plagued our country in these past weeks, and the political divisiveness that shapes how our government operates. In light of all that, I think the readings of this weekend are profound, powerful, and prophetic. Our first reading from the prophet Isaiah sets the theme for our liturgy. Isaiah describes the omission of foreigners into the community of Israel and emphasizes that these newcomers 
have the same status before God as anyone else. Ultimately saying to us that salvation is offered to all people. Now what they choose to do with that is their choice, but it is offered to all. And the Lord says to Isaiah, my house shall be a house of prayer for all peoples. And the invitation for all of us is to recognize that this house of prayer is to be open to and extended to all people. And the question that we might ask ourselves is, how do we help others who come to us feel welcome and have a place to pray here at St. Thomas the Apostle? In our second reading from St. Paul to the Romans, he describes his mission to all nations and both Jews and Gentiles alike. Paul reminds us that God's mercy extends to all people and that all people are called to holiness and salvation. St. Francis de Sales first described this for the church in the phrase of the universal call to salvation. And it was then documented as a key theme of the Second Vatican Council. And who better as a witness to this truth than Paul himself, who persecuted the Christians and then allowed himself to be converted and to become a voice for those who are outside the norms. And then in our reading from St. Matthew's Gospel, Jesus elicits words of faith from a pagan woman, and in response to her faith, he heals her daughter. Jesus uses words that are stunning to listen to. He says, it is not right to take the food of, son, to take the food of sons and daughters and to throw it to the dogs. Scholars tell us that that was most likely a proverb of the time, translated something like this proverb of modern times, charity begins at home. And Jesus is going to shatter that and to open up a different way. It was such an important moment in Jesus' life that it is recorded in both Matthew and Mark's gospel for us to understand. The woman was not Jewish. In fact, Matthew uses an old term so that his Jewish Christian audience would understand. He uses the phrase, the Canaanite woman, to emphasize the point. Jewish people would know how much they hated the Canaanites. They were the enemy to the Jewish people. And so Jesus is making a powerful statement for his disciples to get, that the mission of this church that he invites them to create with him is both multi-generational and it has a worldwide mission. And that mission is extended to all people. Jesus did the same thing a few weeks ago in the miracle of the multiplication of the loaves. The people were hungry and the Lord tells his disciples to feed them. And they said, we can't. And Jesus makes a miracle happen to teach them that they will meet the spiritual hungers of millions of people over the course of centuries through the gift of the Eucharist. Then Jesus sends his disciples out on a lake. They experience a storm. They are afraid. Jesus comes walking on the water, calms the storm, and teaches his disciples that he will be with them even in distress. And now we have this Canaanite woman <clears throat> who comes forward. The Jewish people and the disciples, of course, believed that they had an exclusive right to God's love. In this brief conversation, Jesus gives this woman a chance to show the disciples her strong and persistent faith. And then he grants her request. In that gesture, 
Jesus gives a, us a preview of their mission, the disciples and us, that that love is possible in all people. The message of scripture today reminds us that we are a missionary church and that we are to extend God's love to all people. There is a deep yearning for God within every person. And can we begin to see that? It's easy to see that yearning among our friends and our family. It's difficult to see that among people we don't like or among people who are different from us. And it's easy to be afraid of them because we don't know them. But Jesus challenges us to be different. Sometimes the challenges of reaching out to people is overwhelming. The immigration problem is overwhelming for our world. Racism is overwhelming for our country. Working through these issues, though, is not an excuse to say, because we can't fix them, it's not my problem. What difference can I make in my life here in Glen Mills, Pennsylvania. Matthew West has a wonderful line in a song that he writes and it's called, Do Something. And he says, the something is that God created us to be that something. And we are his church. We are Roman Catholics. And the word Catholic means universal. So how can we be more welcoming and inclusive and caring in the way Jesus challenges his disciples and us in today's scripture. I'll offer you some very simple things that we can do to try to change our world. And it's not so complicated. I think first we need to meet our fears head on. Maybe we need to approach things with this phrase, do all through love and nothing through fear. We can forget everything and run the opposite way, or we can face things and rise and be the ones to change our world. Number two, to be more hospitable, to welcome others we, we, we meet. One of the challenges that I find that I meet is I only see your eyes. I've never seen most of your faces. But trying to see a smile or to reach out and to connect as we meet each other, we need to do. Others need to be acknowledged. So maybe one of the things that we can do to begin to change our world is to get out of our heads and to greet one another, to say hello and to acknowledge another human being by simply greeting them with a smile or because we're wearing masks, maybe letting our eyes know that we recognize them and acknowledge them. Thirdly, to engage people, to begin to have conversations with people who think and act differently from us, to get to know their story. Because we, once we learn the story of another person, even if they may act and believe and do things differently from them, we just might discover that their basis is very much the same as ours. They want to be loved, and they want to love. Once I read in an article that the best way to get another person to tell us more about themselves, and the title of the article was, The Best Question That We Can Ask Someone to Engage Them in Conversation, and it was this. Tell me more about that, whatever the conversation is. And you might just discover that people are willing to tell you more about their story. Fourthly, we might just need to break the bonds of judging others based on how we see them and what we hear about them. Maybe we need to stop labeling people and thinking just because they believe this, they act all that way. And it might not necessarily be true. The best story I know of that is the story of the woman caught in the act of adultery 
And Jesus' response to the person was, if you've never sinned, by all means cast the first stone. But who of us sitting in this room, including myself, is perfect? None of us. We all depend on God's mercy. And maybe we need to be more merciful and kind to one another. And finally, maybe we simply need to be more gentle as a country and as a church. We change things by our words and how we speak to and about other people. Let us pray today that through the gift of the Eucharist that we can be kinder and gentler in the way in which we act and the way in which we talk to one another. In all of my reflections throughout the week in preparation for these readings and this homily, the one quote that stuck with me the most I read from Henry Nowen, whom I believe has not a single word or thought that is not published. But Henry Nowen wrote this, our vocation as Catholics is this, to convert the enemy into a guest and to create the free and fearless space where brotherhood and sisterhood can be formed and fully experienced. How beautiful. We are either going to be a light or we're going to be darkness by the way in which we choose to use our words as we open our arms and try to love other people. On our own, I suspect we will fall short, but it's why we come to this Eucharist every Sunday to receive the body of Christ, to become what we receive, the body of Christ, the church, and to go out into our world and to be that kindness and thoughtfulness as we engage one another. Our world desperately needs you and I to make a difference. Let us pray that with God's help, all things are possible, and we will bring more light to our world through kindness and thoughtfulness as we engage one another in this church that we call Catholic, that is universal, inclusive, and caring. May God be praised. Please stand for a profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He has sent into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now confident that God, who is merciful, will answer our prayers, let us pray for our brothers and sisters throughout our world. That all members of the church strive to deepen their faith and express it through compassion and concern for others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all people from all nations come to accept that God offers salvation to all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That committed Christians and people of goodwill may assist those who are hungry or homeless in their time of need. We pray to the Lord. That we as a faith community can be welcoming of others as we respond to Jesus' call 
to evangelize the world by our kind words and thoughtful actions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick be healed, that the rejected find acceptance, and rebuffed receive courage, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died, especially George Astaphanonis and Rita Zippy, that they may rest in loving embrace of Almighty God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And good and gracious God, as you challenge us to be more loving in the way in which we are inclusive and caring for your people throughout the world, give us the grace to live Jesus in the way in which we choose to use our words and care for one another. We ask you to hear the prayers we make this evening, for we make them in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we are privileged to gather around this altar, praying that simple gifts of bread and wine may be transformed into the body and blood of Christ. And we pray that we too will allow our hearts to be transformed by God's love for us. And so I pray the Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now, possess the pledge of eternal life. And so with all the angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks, you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, that we may be gathered together by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Nelson, our Bishop, and with all the bishops, the clergy, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on all of us, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Joseph, her spouse, with your apostles and martyrs, with St. Francis de Sales, St. Thomas the Apostle, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Now together we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom. And Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever, peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each of you. With your spirit, sir. Let us pray. 
Jesus offer each other a sign of peace by a wave or a nod? Father, peace, peace be with you. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through this sacrament, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be co-heirs to eternal life in heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. And just one announcement this evening. Uh, after this Mass and all the Masses throughout the weekend, we're having a brief training session here in the church for all those who would like to be Eucharistic ministers. Whether you have never done it before and would like to be a Eucharistic minister, or if you have been. And we will do some retraining, and then next week we will recommission everyone into their new ministry uh, for the parish. Have a great week. You, the Lord be with you. With your spirit. And may Almighty God bless each of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Prayer of St. Michael. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Oh